What's going on, rooftop leaders? Let me ask you a question as we come through a year of this pandemic. What do you think reemergence is going to look like? I don't know. The other day, I was having a conversation with um, a leader in a uh, in a tech company, and we were talking about where their company stands and how how they're going to approach the the back to work plan in the coming months. And they said something that actually I've heard across America right now, which is we're probably not going to fully come back to work in the traditional style. There's going to be a hybrid approach. That's a big buzzword right now, this hybrid approach, because, you know, and, and, and he admitted to it. There's been so much cost savings at, a, at an organizational level on, on not having to maintain these office buildings and all the travel. You better believe that organizationally there's going to be emphasis on this hybrid approach where not everybody, in fact, a lot of people don't come back to work. And I think this is important that we consider this as we talk about what reemergence will look like because I don't think that the image or the picture in people's heads necessarily matches up with reality. And I cautioned this gentleman about some below the waterline realities, as we say in rooftop leadership, that maybe he's not thinking about and maybe you're not thinking about whether you are an, a junior associate, a small business owner, whether you are a, a, a corporate C-suite executive. There are some considerations for reemergence that we have to think about. Even if you've been back at work for a while, I think there's some things that we have to consider. Um, and I will tell you, the military community learned a thing or two about reemerging in 20 years of nonstop war. And it took a terrible toll on our population. The, the 22 suicides a day that you see, a lot of that has to do with reemerging from a persistent crisis and the inability to do so. So I want to share some of those lessons on that. And by the way, I'm, I, I'm not a, a self-proclaimed, you know, uh, academic on this. This is stuff I learned the hard way, where I found myself standing in a closet holding a pistol, um, having suffered from my own horrible reemergence. And again, this isn't a doom and gloom thing. This is a leader thing. This is what should we be thinking about when it comes to reemerging from a persistent crisis like COVID? And I want to share three points with you that might inform how you're thinking about this. Number one is a reemergence never goes like you think it's going to go. You know, when we would redeploy from a year in combat, you have what you think it's going to be, and then you have what it really is. And, and after you get past that, uh, that initial moment in the airport when everybody's happy and there's yellow ribbons on the trees and all of that stuff, then life starts to happen. Right? So it's never going to go the way we want it to go. I think that's a very important thing. A couple of, of, couple of comments on that. We're not going to have that, that airfield moment like we had coming back from redeployment. There's not going to be an all-clear siren. There's not going to be a ticker tape parade. And even if there is, be wary of that. I think we should be very leery of that. Um, it's going to be clunky. It's going to be iterative. It'll be three steps forward, two steps back for a while. And in a whole range of levels, and we should expect that as leaders. And finally, I think it's important that we realize that there will be a lot of subsurface realities on this reemergence that are that are not readily apparent. We're going to have to get deeper as leaders than we've ever had to do to pick up on things. Which takes me to my second point: is that the return from a persistent crisis is often the most dangerous part. We learned the hard way in the military in this long war that. Yeah, it's very risky in Afghanistan and Iraq, but in some cases, it's even more risky in Tampa, Florida. When you come home, that is when things can really start to fall apart. First of all, the expectations have to be managed. You know, we all get off that airplane or we all walk back into the sunlight thinking, finally, I can return to normal. That, that phrase always makes me nervous because stasis is for amateurs. There is no stasis in life, particularly coming out of something like this, right? So we have to manage expectations 
False expectations can set us up for failure, especially after we've been scuffed up a lot. The second one is that you know the residual effects of trauma and isolation often manifest during the return, right? We push them down when we have to execute. We push them down. I see so many senior leaders right now about to go down because they've been grinding so hard, right? But when we come back and everything starts to open up, that's when trauma and isolation can really manifest. And third, you know, leaders are not paying attention right now. When they come into that reemergence, leaders, and rightfully so, can, can let their toes uncurl a little bit, feel some sense of relief. Well, that's exactly when your people go down. That's exactly when the dark snakes in the head start to happen around the trauma, the isolation, the anxiety that your people have been living with, and they don't know what to do with it when it comes out in the open. The third piece is about reemergence is that reconnecting, which we have to do as humans, we're wired to connect with each other, it's gonna be awkward at best. I think it's gonna be awkward at best in how we connect with our clients again, with prospects, our coworkers. First of all, because people are gonna be in different states of readiness to connect. Some people, even after a vaccine, are not gonna feel good about it. Some people are not gonna feel good about the vaccine. There's fist fights that break out over whether or not someone has to wear a mask. Right, so imagine how that's gonna to start to manifest. You're gonna have this divergence of, of readiness, of emotional temperatures at different levels for people to connect. And you're gonna to have to manage that as a leader, both inside your organization and outside. I also think that isolation breeds fear and anger. A lot of the in-group, out-group behavior, the low trust, the fear-based behavior, the anger that we see manifesting in the country today you know, that creates a residual churn that we have to deal with as leaders. And, and frankly, a lot of our leaders don't have the connection skills to bring that emotional temperature down, to hold space and connect in spite of that, or to at least not get sucked into it. And we're gonna have to manage that closely as we start to reemerge and come back into the light. And I think reconnecting will be awkward also because this whole talk about a hybrid world, you know, about sp that splits our focus. So if we're gonna be sitting in meeting rooms, for example, where half the rooms they're present, the other half are on remote, I've done a lot of that. And I will tell you that the ancient brain in the high-tech world struggles with that. We're, you know, we have this amazing goal-setting capability, but our cognitive control is not better than a primate. So our ability to split focus like that, no matter how hard you train, that is gonna be extremely difficult. And, 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 and staying at a remote work disposition for beyond two years, three years, we are gonna have severe mental anxiety issues in our organizations. And to ignore that is to, is to be deluded, right? So what I would say is this, is the time to be thinking about this reemergence is right now. We are in a window where the reemergence has not fully occurred. I think we probably have like four to six months at high corporate levels. So what are we doing about it right now? What are we doing to prepare for that? I don't see a lot of leaders at senior, mid-level, and junior levels thinking about this. And frankly, we've never been here before. Veterans have. Talk to your veteran resource groups. Reach out to rooftop leadership. But let's do what we have to do to lead back into the sunlight and make sure that it's not rougher than when we were in darkness. Thanks for what you do, and I'll see you on the rooftop.